All right, this is the uh, January 6, 2020 meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen. Uh, we will also have a joint meeting of the Finance Committee at uh, 7 o'clock to dis start discussing the fiscal 2021 budget. Okay, we're being videotaped by FCAT for viewing later by our residents and the public. First item on the agenda is minutes for the December 23rd meeting. Has everybody had a chance to review the minutes? Yes. Yeah, thank any, you. Any additions or amendments? Nope. No. Good. Okay, I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes for the um, December 23rd meeting. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, yes. Okay, next item on the agenda no, is three good. warrants. We have a vendor secure. warrant for $97,351. Recycling, yeah. A payroll warrant for $108,464. And a payroll deduction warrant for $27,225. Make a motion that we accept those warrants to have a uh, second. Jack. All in favor? I do have a comment about them. I uh, do have a, qu a question about one item in that. Um, the, uh, there was a bill in there to Greg's auto body I don't think so. for the highway truck for the 2014 Dodge pickup of almost $3,000. It looked like a replacement of bumpers and a door. And I, I just want to know: Was that a, an accident? Was that what, what, why? Why? Why is there an expenditure? Right, you can you can handle that offline with with Tom. Yeah, and Ron will be in here later anyway. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, meetings attended by select board board members. Phil, anything? Yeah. Um, just came out of the first frontier budget meeting for the year. Um, saw the proposed budget uh, possibilities. There's no revenue numbers until the charity sheet comes out at the end of this month. Ixnay on public numbers, A, but uh, um, the worst case scenario is looking still like better than last year, so. Well, that's good. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, um, oh, last Thursday, the planning board meeting in this very room Planning board and fireworks meeting, I should add. Uh, uh, that was not that was not a meeting for the uh, faint of heart. But um, glad I went. And it was about. It was about the Roaring Brook Road uh, cannabis cultivation operation. Okay. And the proposed granting of a license to do that by the planning board. So, uh, well attended meeting. Okay. <coughs> That's good. That's good. Robert, did you have any? So fortunately, this is a, sl a slow week meeting-wise with between New Year's and Christmas, but I went to the planning board meeting also. And, and you had fun and, as well? And, uh, of course. Uh, it, you know, it, it's, people are taking all the things, you know, personal, personal, or making a lot of personal accusations, which are unfortunate. Um, the, the meeting was unfortunately announced by the recorder as a continuation of the hearing that closed a month ago. The public hearing was a month ago. They closed the hearing. The recorder said, we're going to continue the discussion, which people felt they could, they had a right to speak. And, and this was just a planning board meeting. And so the planning board really tried hard to accommodate folks who had a lot to say um, but they didn't have the time in the meeting that they had scheduled or the agenda to allow people to speak. And, and it was, uh, um, I suspect the planning board meetings are going to be heavily attended uh, <laughs> until they make the decision of whether to grant the per, uh, permit. So. Okay. All right. Well, I'm, <clears throat> I'm very happy to report that these last two weeks were very slow and I didn't have any meetings. <laughs> So you know where to go to find good meetings. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> apparently planning board's the, the place. Yeah, right now. Okay, public comment. Do we have any public comments? I don't see any. Okay, moving on to old business. Town office closure policy. Discussion and vote. Thomas? Yeah, second draft. Um, I think you all have it. 
um, in your packets, uh, taking into account the comments from last time. Um, uh, the uh, major changes. Um, in closure, there's um, a proposal that the town close its offices for the day by 7 a.m., that is notifying people, when one, there is a statewide state office closure, or two, when localized severe weather is forecast for the day, the highway superintendent and town administrator will determine the severity of the forecast. Uh, furthermore, the town administrator has the authority to close town offices with pay during a workday when severe weather is forecast for the evening commute. So if things are looking really bad for the afternoon, I can send people home and they've made the effort to come in, they've worked, um, so through no fault of theirs, uh, the town is taking that action. So that's the new proposal. And then further on pay, um, uh, if there's a statewide emergency or a regional emergency, including Conway, that is declared by the state, because the state doesn't have to close the whole state down. Right. They can do it county by county. If right. they want. Um, regularly scheduled employees, that was added, regularly scheduled employees mm -hmm. will be paid for the day. If there's no closure declared, employees may use personal or vacation time or make up lost time after notifying their supervisor. So they can choose not to come in so long as they notify their supervisor um, or they can use personal or vacation time for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, that's uh, taking into account some of the mm -hmm. comments from last time. How many, let's see, you've been here, what, six years now? Yeah. How many times have we actually closed the office during the day? I can't remember any time. I, uh, I think there was a, at least one snowstorm in the past few years when we... One time, maybe? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's not going to be a, all that big a deal. But exactly. At least we have something. I, I need something to go on. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. so that's, that's why I'm, uh, I, I, I'm asking. I, I fully agree with that. I yeah. disagree. <laughs> okay. So, so what about, um, you know, you, you were going to survey department heads to... Uh, about what the impact on their budget would be and um, whether they were in favor or opposed to this. Yeah, right. well, of course, public safety, there's, there's no impact because they have to come in, they're doing it anyway. They, they, don't, they don't get any of this, the public safety people. Same as the public works people. So, um, you know, Ron's comment was, what do I care? <laughs> um, so there's, there's no impact on the budget for them. The, the impact is on the, the office workers. And um, uh, Lee said it was fine with her. The Board of Health has an entirely different setup with the transfer station, and they have to make a different set of decisions um, because they have to know earlier than anyone else. And um, they have to notify their, uh, their hauler if it's on a day when the hauler's coming. So that is still in, in process. So it, it's, it's really the town office, the people who work in the town office. Um, and out of those, um, Lori is an elected official, so she can actually come up with, you know, whatever policy she wants. So what we're talking about is Lisa and Jan and Lynn and me. Um, and if the assessors want to buy into it or the Board of Health wants to buy into it, then they can. But... Um, it's really a board of selectmen policy for the employees that uh, the board oversees. So I thought, first of all, that the, when, that the town will close its office. The number two part, when localized severe weather is forecast for the day, that's really vague and um, just, you know, what does that mean? Um, well, well how, how specific would you like to make it, Phil? Um, only, when this, only when the governor declares a state of emergency. Period. That that was the snowstorm that you're referencing. Is when the governor see what what, what you're not taking into account is the enormous impact that this has on the relationship with our school unions. And at, now, I, we, and, and, we're, and we're not we're not. But you are. We're you not going to make our decision based on what the school union does. We're but making you, our decision based on our. That's not reality. reality. That's just making an artificial line in the sand that only you believe in. The reality is the unions every single time come and say, we want to be paid 
for snow days. It's not fair to us. We sit at home and it's a, it's a day lost for us. We, it's not fair that, that we don't get that, paid. That's, just, that's a union and, problem. That's not our problem. And as soon as they see this, what do you, as soon as they see that you have a policy to pay your town hall employees, then they are also town employees. What do you, you how can you just say no? No, no, you're, you, you're just different. You're not as good as them. What do you say? It's, it, it's, it's, it's real. It doesn't say we're going to close the office every time there's a snow day. Right? It, it no, could that's be one of the things it, I took out right. based on I Bill's mean, comments. Right. It's, it's, vague and it's vague to that point, though. And, and the, you know, the, the no, fact that... No, that point was taken out specifically because of your comment. So that's not in there. I think the thing is when, when um, the, 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 the teachers have to make up that day and they get paid for making up that day. So they do get paid when they lose a day in the winter because they work that day later. And we could, we could you know, um, as it says, um, you know, um, the uh, employees can make up for, for lost time. We could, in, we could include that. So uh, up until now, this has been a case-by-case -case basis where, what, you'd make a phone call and it, this is too bad and the... Yeah, so I, I would make the decision with Tom whether we close or not. So that is a far safer alternative for the future of our labor relations than having an actual policy in writing that you can get beaten over the head with it every time you sit down at negotiations. And I, for one, ah. am tired of getting beaten over the head at negotiations. And, um, and this is the perfect example of something that's not necessary. You don't have to hand them this club to beat me over the head with. So, it's a don't. The, the school is over here. And I'm somewhat traumatized by recent events. Well, but, well apparently. But, but, uh, but you know, I want to nip this stuff in the bud and just not, not have these messy, messy negotiations where all this stuff comes up all the time. I, I think you made the point earlier that the town had, the, and, and you were the, the chair of the policy committee for the schools. Yes, unfortunately I am. So, and you made the point that they're not the same as the town. They, this is. There are many, many differences, but we. They always start from the point of view of, you're doing this for others, do it for us. Or, um, and, and when you say no, um, there's only a few things that you can say no with before things start to really slide downhill too. And this just isn't necessary. This just because we don't have a policy, doesn't mean that a policy in writing is necessary. I would much rather have it currently, and that when there's a severe snowstorm, the select board chair can authorize it, and that is not in writing, and I can't, we can't be... Well, that's a policy. Yeah, yeah, that's a policy, and it, it's an unwritten policy, subject to chain, chains of the whim of the select board chair. But uh, I, I need a written policy, and I'm happy to write that up. But I need something that I can refer to that gives me guidance. Um, and, that, and, that, and that's fine. I mean, an unwritten policy is, is not a policy. And, and I, I, I need something that I can point to and say, yes, this is a snow day. Yes, this is, no, this is not a snow day. Because we have employees who need to know that. Well, I think we're spitting into the wind here, Phil. This is not a big deal. So says you. So says and, you, and, and who I'm doesn't have to sit down across the table from these groups. Okay, but, but we're here at the Solent Board. Phil. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, and, and, you know, un unfortunately, you're in, sitting in two different positions. Um, but that shouldn't affect the way we make our decisions. And, and, and if the policy is that it's up to the select board chair or the select board chair in, in communication with the town administrator, that, that those are, that's fine. That's something I can point to and say, this is what the policy is, here's what we did. Um, that seems less problematic than, current, than currently. Um, whenever there's sorts of conditions or things that could be applicable to other groups, that's what, that's what I'm nervous about. Well, this, so, this so some, is as applicable to the school as their policies are to town employees. 
And it, and so I, right I, now it doesn't say anything about the select board chair, right? Yeah, this had the highway superintendent and the town administrator. Right. right. Um, because the highway superintendent is out on the town, and I'm being paid to and, and I didn't supervise like the, and, and, and I'm, I'm not confident in the highway superintendent's ability to discern the, discern the subtle difference between a snow day for the purpose of school buses, meaning they can't go into the lowest dirt, like worst dirt road of ours to pick up kids, and... Uh, the, the snow day for the purposes of town hall, which means is a state road clear? And um, those are two different things. And I, 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 um, that should not be up to the highway superintendent to make that di subtle nuance of a distinction. Uh, Tom, Tom and I always speak when there's the snow forecast about what's going on. And we always get the input of our highway super. Because he knows the roads better than anybody else. And he's out on them. Okay. Yeah. Which is important. It's important to get his input. And he'll know if the, if the state roads are good. It was one of the things he told me during the last snowstorm, which is why he didn't call off work. He said, the state road's pretty good. It's slippery, but it's pretty good. I said, okay. It's slippery. That's what winter roads are like. So I didn't take any further action. Some people decided to stay home. So de facto, that's, that's, but they didn't, they, they aren't getting paid for it. And that's, you know, again, this is, it's all up to the board. But, but ha having something that I can use to make the decision, it, you know, I, the, the board is a policy setting body and, and uh, I'm asking for a policy. So, yeah, um, it's one thing to not come in and to then work another day and get paid for that other day. It's another thing, it, but it's a different thing altogether to have a policy that says you get paid for sitting at home. So, um, that's the other part that I, that I disagree yeah. with. So, so, so if, if, they, if they make up that, um, yeah, and, and, and there's a... It's, it's difficult because we have, we have so many part-time workers who either have other jobs or other responsibilities or this is, this is their time that's budgeted to, to be in town. Um, it's, you know, teachers are full-time. Yeah, and the biggest cost to this too is all the IAs, and, um, which are not, and all the non-union people um, who are much more comparable to the town employees, salary-wise and duties-wise and hours-wise. But this doesn't cover them. I, I no, mean, no, but that's the next step. That's the next step. The next step is you did this for your town. Here's the cost of your town. We need. We want this too. That's that's what's coming next. Sure, as the sun follows the evening. All right, but we, we can't make our decision based on what might happen at the school. But it, that's all part of it. It's, it. It ends up being what we pay for as a town, and I know it's different, completely different universes, but in the final analysis, it all ends up to be our, our money, our taxes, our assessment that pays for both. So we, we have maybe one, one and a half snow days a year. That's it. The rest of the time, we work around it. I don't know what the big deal is. Um, because if we end up having to do this for, for, for Everybody in that school building, you're talking about thousands of dollars every snow, every day, every every snow day, ten thousand a year or more. It's real numbers. That that policy is decided by the school. But the difference the difference is that the teachers are expected to make it up, and we're not asking yeah. that here. I mean, they're actually required to make it up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right by law, they have to do 180 days. It's not a question of money, really. Right. Well, I mean, the, the difference here is that they don't have to make it up. This says you get if if it's an emer if it's an emergency, you get paid for the day, um, and we don't do that. We we make them work another day. You get to you get to come back and work another day, and you get paid for that other day that you work. Well, that's because they have to have a certain number of days a year. Paid for the day is only for a statewide emergency or you know regional emergency. It's not. 
you know, it's, it's, paid for the day is more restrictive than closing the office. Okay, I'll give you that. You you run this by Jack? No, you have no, no, I haven't. Okay. No, I, th right. I, I, it, it, I think it's a it's a policy matter for the board. I'm happy to go back and, and give it another whack. And just in the meantime, we'll just do what we've been doing because that's what we do. Okay. In, in deference to Phil, all right. Let's run it by Jack. Just the same policy. Just say how does this how does this sound to you? And we'll leave it at that. And he comes back and says, we like, he's, he's okay with this, maybe with a couple of, uh, you know, edits. We're doing it. Phil. Mm -hmm. Okay. But in deference to you, we'll do one more thing, and we'll send it by Jack. Okay? Is that I good? appreciate the deference. Too. Okay. I, I like deference. Deference is good. Okay. okay. Next item on the agenda. How long do we spend on that? We spent almost a half That's hour. That's good. We had a half an hour. Well, no, actually, they were sitting here. Okay, sorry. Next item, new business. Yeah. We have to uh, select a Conway resident uh, who has uh, passed away to honor them in the memoriam in the annual report. Do we have any nominations, Tom? We do. Um, both the current and the uh, recent town clerk believe that Peter Zale would be the best um, uh, best uh, resident memorialized. Was Jack Ramey the year before? His, was it yes. Jack Ramey last year too? We had we had Jack last okay. year, right? Yeah. All right, yeah. good. Then, yeah. Uh, then yeah, good. Okay, uh, that's that's Jenny's nomination. Yeah, okay. and then Lori concurs with that. Okay. Um, my, my only question was: Was it really fiscal year 2019? Did he, he die before July? I just thought of that. Is it calendar year or fiscal year? Well, the uh, town report is for the fiscal year 2019. So, right. Um, I, I think I think he died in fiscal 2020. Yeah, I I, I just thought of that. Um, do, do we, so let's uh, yeah. let's take that back. A, a week won't make a difference. Yeah. Uh, okay. On that and, one. Any other ideas? Um, I don't have any at the moment. Okay, all right. Mm. Maybe it would help if we got a complete list. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we'll table that. Okay, proposal for a town hall and office renovation committee. Yeah, uh, again, a pretty brief thing there. You know, obviously there, uh, the talk of uh, the lift and possible renovations came up and it's time to formalize that I think a little bit. Um, you can see I came up with a charge for that committee to identify town office and meeting space needs and desires of staff and committee members to identify space needs and desires of the public and to provide a scope of services and cost estimate for professional design services for consideration by town meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I already told you that I would be happy to serve oh, on that. All right, meeting. that's good. Because um, I, I had identified, I would be uh, ex officio, more or less, not being a Conway resident and therefore not eligible to serve on a committee. Right. Um, right. But I would, I, would, uh, I would plan to uh, attend. Sure. Um, the building maintenance manager, I think, would be somebody who should be on it, as well as a capital improvement planning committee member. Right. Um, a staff member from the town office and a staff member from the town hall. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, both the treasurer, collector, and administrative assessor have said that they would be willing to serve. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and a select board member. Uh, and again, this is this is to come up with some kind of a report, which might be acceptable, might not be acceptable to some people, but it would be a start on getting the data. And were you looking at me when you said some people? Yeah, yeah. No, I was glad to see this. I was glad to see this. I thought um, thought that you would really do well to have a couple members of the public too. 
just well, the select board is we, we can we can do we can do all the meetings. And, uh, it's and, just and, to have and 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 just to have as a look at town meeting floor. Just and, to, and if it's all employees talking about, I would these, certainly these. expect the committee to bring in a lot of other people to talk about their needs and desires, which is why I wrote that in there. This is core. This is just core. When do you need this? Do you, you have a date for when you want to form? Um, no, but you know, I, I, you know, I would rather not delay too much, just because spring is approaching. Why? Why do you ask? The Capital Improvement Committee meeting is meeting to, uh, Wednesday, so we could hopefully give, well, you, give you a name. We're, we're, yeah, we're just we're just looking at. at Positions right now. Yeah. Um, you know. Yeah, I'm not asking you to actually appoint people right now. I'm oh, just okay. presenting this for the first time as, and this is, and I'm saying why I did it the way I did it. So that's, you know, the, the users of this include the seniors, the, all those, the, the people that write us letters complaining about the plan, all that stuff. They, they should be, you should have one or two of them involved in this. Well, so well, they, we don't have the committee too big, but we'll bring in, we'll bring in groups. To, to talk with us. I think that's, you know. Yeah, I, I think, you don't I think having get, Council on Aging input would be vital, obviously. You don't want to get um, a, but a, having a committee that's, that's members of the committee, yeah. Unwieldy. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. So this is the this is this is the, the concept. We don't have to we don't have to vote on the concept. We just have to say yes, we'd like we'd like a uh, Town Hall and Office Renovation Committee. This is the basis of it. We can always add to it and you know make changes to it. All right. And, and I would I would bring it back you know next week for further discussion and appointments if if the capital improvements people are ready. Okay. All right. We'll bring it back next week for a vote, officially forming the committee. See, I mean, the, the concern is that, you know, that, John, John, you said that this, you know, when, when we talked about this project, this, whatever, this renovation of this building, you had said that you think that the highest and best needs are, are offices for this. And, and I had asked before, when this was on the warrant, that to make the warrant article subject to, uh, to, to, to using part of it for a meeting space, and you weren't willing to do that. And then it ends up going down in defeat at town meeting because... Be, uh, with with specific requests by voters that you that you uh, take a, a quarter of it to to be public meeting, and I'm concerned that if it's just all inside baseball people, that that might not be addressed, and you're going to be at the exact without members of the public that are there to say we want meeting space, not all offices that 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 we're just going to be back to square one. Any, oh, any, and, and I completely any, agree. We need substantial meeting space. Any but, any renovation. <laughs> Any renovation we do is going to have to go to town meeting anyway. Mm. So it's going to be voted on by the residents. Yeah, it's going to have to be and acceptable. I'm, I'm trying everybody. to position it so that it will get voted on yes instead of voted on no. As no. I'm sure the committee will as well. That being the goal. Okay, so we'll come back next week and vote on that. Okay, next item. Selectman's working group to discuss the future of Union 30. I thought we weren't going to have a union. We're not going to have a union anymore. What are we worried this about the days for? So this is a different union. Uh, so this, the, Union 38 refers to the four towns that have joined together in a superintendency union with yeah. each of their four independent local school districts. Yeah. Um, and for which we have no operating agreement whatsoever, by the way. Um, and so... This came out of discussions that I had, uh, I've been having with John Gould from Adam Hines' office, and the, uh, always complaining about not getting our bus reimbursement money for Conway and for 100% of it. And, and, you know, he's like, instead of just complaining, do something about it. Let's write a law. So, um, so this is an initial, an initial working group to assemble the technical data needed um, to position the district in a better way for the future. Um, uh, so uh, specifically equalizing our rates of health insurance <coughs> for, amongst the four towns, which is what they did. The state used to do this regularly. It's what they did with the Pioneer District to get Pioneer to regionalize K through 12. And um, uh, so we're going to see if we can 
put together something. It's, this is the quintessential wild goose chase, um, but you, 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 you're never going to get it if you don't ask for it. So um, in the hope that, that, that this can be lead to something positive down the line, the, the first, we're, we're just really trying to assemble the technical information about what the different insurance costs would, the, the four towns all have different co-pays for their, for their health insurance. That's the huge obstacle for doing anything more permanent um, uh, amongst the four towns um, because they have to be equalized to be one single district and they have to be equalized at the highest rate, which is Conway right now. But Frontier has an even higher rate. So there's all kinds of technical information that needs to be done. So this is sort of letting you know that um, uh, this is going to happen um, just to write a law. And, and you're volunteering to do this? Well, um, just, to, just to lead this initially, I'm hoping that... Uh, so the other towns will do this? Th yeah, there's one, there's one uh, that, you know, to, to, to just initially assemble the technical information so that we're in a position to meet with the Senate uh, Legislative Affairs Office um, and, and do the nuts and bolts <coughs> of sausage making, a.k.a. writing a law. Um, but we're, that's, we're still a long way from it even being something that we're going to be interested in as a town, and it could very, we don't have, even amongst the four of us, the four towns, we don't have, we have a 15% say. So if it, uh, yeah, so there's many, many possible pitfalls a slender, slender avenue for success, the quintessential wild goose chase. But, so, but, so but, but right now, we're, we're giving up hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in either not being reimbursed at all or being reimbursed less than 100%. So we can structure things differently so that we get our full transportation reimbursement, but not if it costs us a million dollars a year in health insurance. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. And, 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 and you think the, the answer to that is to, to discuss the future of Union 38? Um, How does that, what does that have to do with transportation reimbursement? Uh, because we, as, as independent school districts, you, just K through 6, you are not eligible for, for transportation reimbursement. We, our, our local bus budget of 250000 300000 a year or more than that now, um, th there's no state reimbursement. Mm -hmm. The Frontier, which is much more than that, we, the state <coughs> every year decides the last minute what a percentage is. If we are fully regionalized, which is a scary word that I was hoping to avoid having to mention. Right. So, um, so that's but, what you're but, saying. So you're talking about regionalization of, of K through 6 among the four towns. Which would be K through 12 altogether. But, um, but the initial step to that, we can't even ever consider that unless we could approach that subject from a point of zero and not a point of owing millions or lots of money for health insurance changes, whatever. So this is to see if the state will get us to zero so that we then can cons consider the benefits of it rather than the costs of it. And they have done this in the past because it's a huge benefit to the state. They get many fewer schools to deal with and that's um, they love that so who else has done this um, in the past five years nobody but prior to that they've done it like 20 times what happened in the last five years that they haven't done it? nobody's applied there's very few there's only 30 regional districts left they're like us um, so that and that's what everybody says everybody is just like you know you, you got it it's worth trying you might, you might, they've been interested in this in the past, especially if you have something that you can then sit down with Desi with, that right now if you just sit down with them, we have nothing. So if we say this is what we want, then if you get Desi's support, and they've supported these things, and if the key thing is seen to be if Desi supports it, you have a far greater chance of it being enacted. Okay. So, um, so you like beating your head against the wall? No, I like trying to stop, to trying to just, you know, we have these elephants in the room, and that's one of them. And it's like, if we never do anything about these, then I feel, and, and what's the use of complaining about it? And I really like complaining about it, so i got to do something. Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, so... So, no vote is necessary, but I will welcome uh, either one of you replacing me at any time. So, uh, <laughs> doing that. Yeah. No, Phil, it's all yours. All right. I, it's all yours. All right. Do we have a finance committee coming tonight, Thomas? Uh, they are coming uh, uh, presently. Oh, from? Do they, they have a meeting? 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're, they're over at the town office. I think they're coming over right now. Okay. Um, why don't we go on to um, any items unanticipated, Thomas? Yes, this is perfect. Um, just got this in today. Nothing necessary to do on it now. This is the oh, right the, local oh, the technical list. assistance sure. yeah. thing Here we go. every year. When do you need this by? Uh, the 24th. Okay. Good. Yeah, I have. Um, well, look look who's here. Three reindeer. All uh, right. I, I have requested um, from various boards the, that um, they give us their priorities by next Wednesday. Okay. Which is going to be impossible. Okay, and you well, want we don't actually have to have it, but we can have it in two weeks. Okay. Um, because that's the last select board meeting before we have to send it in. Okay. Good. Everybody knows we've got a deadline on this? Okay. So if we can get it in in a week, that, that would be good. Um, it would help if I could tell the other committees that we're waiting. Okay. Well, now that the finance committee is here, we can we can start on the finance. And meeting. you have a quote. Ha Happy New Year, quarter. guys. Nice year. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. It's great. Glad to see you. Yes. And Happy here we are at the start of budget season. Exactly. The fun, the, the, um, the most the fun we have year. all year. Okay. All right. And first up, out of the box, is the Board of Health. Carl, take it away. Well, I've got a little handout here. We've got a lot of information. But, um, what's going to happen come uh, July of uh, 2020 is we have a new contract oh, yeah. and new negotiations with a trash hauler. Thank you. And it's still going to be waste management. It's going to be the same people we're dealing with. <coughs> but the only, Thank you. The only uh, issue is that where we used to get reimbursed for recycling that we handed in. And it's gone it's gone from like sixty dollars a ton, I remember, you know, several years ago that we got for every ton we gave in, we got sixty dollars back down to we're down to about six dollars a ton now. Six dollars a ton. Right. But the problem is is that the Chinese have said we're not going to take your trash anymore. So um, Fortunately, we're dual stream, so the cost isn't going to be as much as single stream towns are. Um, anybody understand the principle of single stream? No. Dual stream? You tell us? Yeah. When we collect our recycling, <coughs> we collect the paper separate from our cans and, and containers. So everything travels in two streams. Some towns put everything into one bin and they grind it up and, and send it out, which is it's, it's impossible to, to uh, recycle. Mm -hmm. So um, what's going to happen come July of, um, of 2020 is we go into a new contract and it's now going to cost us $93.50 a ton to get rid of recyclables. So instead of making 60 like we were, now mm -hmm. it's going to cost us 93 93 dollars yeah. So we're, we're not going to be making anything on no. our recyclables. No, it's going to cost us big time. Of course, this morning. If you look at the handout I just gave you, I just underlined, underlined the town of Conway. Yeah. Okay. Now, based on these numbers, okay, now in 2018, we recycled uh, 196.41 tons mm -hmm. of recycling in 2018. Um, that same number, based on that same number, uh, it's now going to cost us $18,364.34 to get rid of it. Is, is that more than if it were just trash? I mean, what would, how yes. would that compare? Yeah, because we, we, well, there's, there's no facilities for, for recycling any of this stuff domestically. Yeah. Okay. There, there are uh, a number of paper mills within, all around the country who are going online to, to take the paper, which is probably the most valuable thing that we recycle. Um, but that isn't going to happen yet. Now, out of this 9350 per ton, there's going to be what's called an average waste, average waste. You mean the average market value? Our average market, average market value for the stuff we're recycling, and so we will be compensated slightly. So we may be, you know, allowed thirty dollars a ton. 
or something like that, that this is a number that's going to fluctuate from month to month. So you never, and, and coming off the line for the first several months, or even years maybe, it, it, that, that, a, that average market value is not going to be very high. So we're, we're set on 93. 93 for how long? Five so years. Five year contract. Five years. But we never know. Oh, oh, wait a minute. That's right. It's, 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 es it's escalator. So it goes up by 5% every year. Right. Okay. And we never know what the market so value is. Do so they can? We oh, never know what the market value is on a month to month basis of our recyclables. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll be asked to sign the contract by the end of the month. Right. We have to sign the contract by the 31st of um, 31st of January, uh, and we have a, we have copies of the contract if you if you want it. Uh, to take, have, you want to have Jack take a look at it first. It's it's been pretty badly sniped at by other uh, I'm sure. legal uh, minds in, in, within the within the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District. So so what are our options here? I don't know. That's why we're talking to you guys. Do, 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 do we not? Uh, we'll, we'll I mean, I, I, I brought along Veronique Blanchard, who mm -hmm. works for the DEP mm -hmm. and is a member of our of our Board of Health, right. and actually was one of the people that helped draft a lot of the data that we're looking at here. In fact, that spreadsheet is, is hers. Okay. Half mine. Okay. The other half. So, looking at it, we don't look like as much of a trash hog as I thought we were. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ashfield, man. Yeah. My goodness. Learn to recycle, Ashfield. Um, look at those numbers. Wow. Deerfield's worse than us, too. How come um, ours is 30 and theirs is, Ashfield is 5? I mean, it, so I, I'm just shocked at the, the, the huge difference. The, 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 the way this spreadsheet was um, set up is that we took the number of tons that were reported at the MRF and multiplied it by the 9350. So that's your column that says dual stream. You can ignore this. Yeah. I don't know if yours says single stream. Mm -hmm. should that out. Okay. No. Then household served is what's reported to DEP about the number of households that the municipality services with their programs. It's based on stickers. Correct. So the 610 is the number of stickers that were given Almost out in 2018. Trash. So this is just a, another way to frame how much it's going to cost where you take um, that and multiply it and come up with, okay, it's $30 per household increase per year. You know, so the 30 times the 610 is going to be the 18,000. So it was just another way to frame and maybe make it a little bit more palatable to say $30 <coughs> per household as opposed to you got to find $18,000. Okay. So do, do, we, do, we increase, do we increase our sticker price? We could. We had a Cover very hard, very tough sale this year. We went to ten dollars when it used to be free. Yep. It was it was it was a nice tough year. sale at ten dollars for the whole year. It's a dollar. Yeah, and, and there were people from the Cape who were paying two hundred dollars a year saying, Oh, this is a deal. Yeah. Uh, they have summer homes out on the Cape where they live for part of the year. And the number of common residents that with that one dollar sticker that still when they change vehicles, rather than pay the next dollar, they would scrape it off of the license plate and then you can see they would try taping it. Mm -hmm. And the number of common <coughs> vehicles that I would see with a taped over one dollar sticker. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know, the, the objections that I heard to it were just that people didn't know it was coming. And that right. they show up, they show up, and they're told pay ten dollars, or you can't. You know, it's mm -hmm. the end of the month. You haven't been here. Da, da, da. And those were the people that registered complaints to me. I don't know. Yeah, we heard that too. Yeah, sure. I know. I just make sure, make sure that I heard this. So you said thirty dollars uh, at eleven cent per household increase. So annually. Mm -hmm. Annually. But so this we've been operating. We've been making money? Is that really what you were, were saying? Before? Yeah, so um, I've actually been on the MRF Advisory Board since 2007, which is the body that manages the Springfield MRF. Is everybody familiar with the MRF and how it operates? Okay, great. So um, in the beginning when I started, we actually had a floor, no matter what, we would make $15.67 a ton and we would get revenue on top of that. So that's when... Carl was referring back to the good old days where we would make $60 a ton okay. if we had a good revenue. Right. This last contract from 2015 until June of this year, 
it went um, ten dollars, eight dollars, eight dollars, six dollars, six dollars. Right now we're making six dollars a ton. I see. So it's going from a profit of six dollars a ton to paying ninety three fifty for a processing fee. Yeah. But then it will be partially offset by whatever the market value is. And as Carl said, that will fluctuate month to month. It depends on a series of indices right. for the market. So you're estimating about thirty dollars. This is an estimate. Well, that's just, so what we, we did not include, because I think for budgetary purposes, you would agree you really wouldn't want to count on the revenue. You want to go with what you know you have to pay. Okay. So this is based on the 93.50 a ton that we know we're going to have to pay okay. next year. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there things we could do that would make our recycles more attractive? I mean, you're saying we are good and that we're separating paper yeah. and everything else. Can we separate some of the everything else? In the MRF contract, there is um, a glass is really problematic. Yes. And very heavy. Yeah. So the MRF contract offers a $5 a ton credit for removing glass. And actually, I'm hosting a meeting on January 14th for the whole of Western Mass to talk about options for glass management. So hopefully we'll have more to share at that point um, because you would have to take it out, you know. And mm -hmm. if you have a transfer station like we do, it's not all that problematic. You get an extra roll off and you figure out, you know, sell people to put their glass there. But you can tell people just put your glass in your trash. No, I, I, you cannot no, do that no. because we have statewide waste bans. Yeah, you have to recycle. Yeah. whatever it is. Take it to big Y. Yeah. Well, uh, if it's a deposit, yeah. But if it's uh, you know wine bottles, then. But so not only did, would you get a five dollar ton credit, but um, Jan Amin, who you know runs our, our Franklin County district, I think it told us that in a dual stream with your bottles and cans portion of it, fifty percent by weight is glass. So if you take that out, that's ninety three fifty a ton. You're paying half of. You see what I mean? You're taking off sure. half of that, and then you get a five dollar ton credit on top of that. So removing glass for everybody who's thinking about joining this new MRF contract is huge mm. because you could really see some savings. So, so, so essentially, so essentially yeah. Yeah, where did this go? So you'd be yeah. reducing this $30 to $15 if you did that? Uh, well, no, because there's still the paper side. So it's like a quarter. It, well, it depends on how you do the weight. I don't know. I just know that of the, if you set aside the paper, of the bottles and cans portion of it, 50% by weight is glass. Right. But that $30 a ton is based on glass and paper, paper together. Too. Yes, okay. so I couldn't okay. tell you what the percentage is. I can tell you that in a single stream, glass is 20% roughly, but. All right, so if we, if we separated the glass. Oh, she did that, yeah. We separated the glass okay, we can and charged $20 per sticker, we'd just about be break even. P potentially, um, although I don't know how quickly we could, for this budget season, it's, you, we're, it, that's not a reality, I don't think, because the it, part of this is that um, the MRF Advisory Board and DEP, well, it has to be an approved program. In other words, you can't just take out the glass. You have to show that you're sending it somewhere, which is the whole reason I'm having this meeting is so that we can talk about what okay. are those options. So before we separate it, we have to say, hey, this is going somewhere Correct. to be handled properly. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the other options is right now at the MRF, when the glass comes in, it gets um, crushed to 3 eighths inch um, minus. And if I believe the setup is that if a municipality comes in, and takes from the bunker the amount of glass that equals what they would have brought in, then they'll get a wash with that as well. So, you know, there are several options, but that's why we want to explore all this right away to see. But I don't know how quickly we'd be able to set that up to influence this budget season. Now, it's my understanding that Massachusetts, does it last glass recycling facility closed recently. Correct. Uh, yeah, and that's part of the reason. That's part of the reason for this whole situation. Yes, because yes, glass there, has a negative value right now. So there's no there's no potential for another place opening to recycle um, glass. I would not say that. You never know because markets. Whenever there's a void in the markets, I mean, things come in, and it wouldn't surprise me if within a year or two there was another outlet. Mm -hmm. But. MassDEP also has, um, part of what we're going to be doing at this glass workshop is you can use glass for processed glass aggregate. 
in which case you actually refine it further down mm -hmm. and can use it in other mass DOT applications. And I've heard that it, in terms of frost heave and culverts and stuff, it works better than sand. Mm -hmm. That's what I've heard. Mm -hmm. um, so you can, and mass DEP has grants um, for municipalities, and two of them are coming to this meeting that we're having mm -hmm. to um, get the equipment to set up a site and have maybe a regional group get together and say, we're going to send all of our glass here and we're going to process it. and then. Basically, the idea is whatever the municipality brings in, they take back out again, and you know, and it's a, it's still a fee for processing, and because you have to still have to pay for that, but mm -hmm. it's a lot lower than the ninety three fifty. And the other thing that can be used for is um, fiberglass insulation. So there's mm -hmm. there's other applications, mm -hmm. so there's other possibilities, and that's what we're trying to. Too, right? I'm sorry. Paving. Too. Well, uh, this is one of the things that I know there there have been. DOT regulations on the books since I want to say like 1994, but there's a lot of confusion about what it is. I don't happen to have the link offhand of what you can use it on, mm -hmm. but that's one of the things we're hoping Mass DOT will come to my meeting and tell us <laughs> exactly what we can use it for. In so in the short term, between now and the time we finish our budget, what can we do? For that, I mean, if you, if you had a plan for the glass, if, if you're talking specifically about removing glass, you'd have to have a plan and you'd have to run it by the Murph Advisory Board and DP and say, this is what we're doing with our glass. Well, it looks like it's going to take a while for that to go through. I think so. So we're not talking about not 2021, we're talking about 2022. So what do we do for 2021? Do we just increase your budget by $20,000? Because we have, we, we're, we're looking at, a, we're looking at roughly we're not finalized yet. There's uh, 200,564 for our, our 21 budget, uh, so we'd have to add 20 to that, uh, plus whatever we just started a um, composting operation up at the transfer station, and so whatever that we, we this, which is going to cost us a little bit, but but it's not bad. It's, it's very reasonable. Plus we have RDP funds that might cover most of that. Like so, so, so it sounds the, sounds like the only realistic alternative here is to increase your budget by twenty thousand, mm -hmm. specifically for uh, paying for the for the new recycling contract. Mm -hmm. All right, and, and we might need another line item or another right. Item. So I, I would I would put it in a separate line item. Yeah, you know, a, a new line item. Is is there no um, beneficial impact on the uh, compost? Uh, not yet. So uh, how is the usage come? rate? What's that? How is the usage rate? How many we people have, are composting? We haven't even had it emptied yet. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, because it looked pretty full the last time I was there. Yeah. Wow. No, I mean, it's so, a lot of pizza boxes. Yeah. So, so I'm, like, I, I, I noticed each time I was there that I was the only one doing it. I, me too. I do the and, same thing. And, um, and, and, and I, I asked friends why they're not doing it. And nobody liked it. Apparently, touching their trash is a real squeamish thing. I never really, I don't know. You but, like, but you like the well, no, no, I never, I never was squeamish touching mine. Never, never, it never was slightly like, no, I'm not. I don't care. I'm not going to do that. The rotten onion hit your So, 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 my my point is that that um, the containers that the the salt the, the the containers that you can get for five bucks up in Greenfield. Yep. So, um, is there any chance that we can increase? The rate of households that have those containers we and have, participate we, in this program. We have a Could, shed up, on the, up at the transfer station. We probably have 70 or 80 of them sitting in the shed, ready to go. Green, the little green pails. Can we, yeah, can we put a sign out by the thing that says that those are available and that let's, you well, know. We could look at that, yeah. I mean, we'd have, I'd have to see how many were there. I mean, because yeah. that would be, I mean, if people can get started doing that and they pay cash for our compost. Yeah, but I see a lot of people leave them off at the free table. Oh. Prior, you know, like over last summer when we were the, when we were selling dump stickers, mm -hmm. people were leaving off the green pails at, at, at the free table. You know, like, they're, they're not going to do it. Mm. All right, Tom, you have a question. When you say uh, a different line item for this, you mean within the board of health budget, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Just a just a different number. You mm -hmm. know, yeah. Okay. Four twenty-two or something like that. All right, that looks like matter. our only alternative for this year. I, I believe so. Okay. We've had very short notice on this. We didn't find out about this until <coughs> December 11th. We all went down to the old, older transfer center. <coughs> Jan ran a Jan ran a program. So so we got we got we short notice. It's going to take a while to get this to do any other alternative. I think it's going to take probably quite a while. Okay. How do you go about changing, paper, changing the rates that you charge? You know, moving changing the ten dollars 
or having Conway go to a per bag no, cost. No, 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 I think I think this what we're doing is working well, okay. and I think that we can, you know, eventually it, it's going to settle down because Jan was also talking about dozens of paper mills that are going to come online over the next several years because they're going to want this this recycled paper. So that's going to find a home first, and then and then the other stuff will. It, it's a shock right now, but you know I think I think it'll 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 pan out. I just think take a. Do you Three think, to five years. Do you think increasing your line item and then increasing the fee for the the sticker mm -hmm. will will work? Um, well, it's going to be another tough sell. <laughs> you know, but I'm, but I, I, I think if, if we get a lot of support and we and we do a lot of um, you know get out and the visitor and get you on know, the website and, and and whatnot else and, and and we get a lot of support from <coughs> you guys. If we're, and we go to thirty dollars, you know, it, it, it might play a little bit better because they've already been hit with the ten. Well, well, maybe maybe we go twenty this year and thirty next year. Right. That would be fun. There's also a good yeah. argument for keeping it as it is and having this just get paid through general revenue. And that the, the, it's it's whether taxi it, the sticker is more regressive. And there are people, you know, the, I I got complaints from people, you know, there's seniors that live alone that come there once every two months with two bags. And you know, and, and the flip side of that is that there are um, quite a few households that pay privately to get their trash taken. That would, that would then not be supporting this right. um, financially. Not. And and there's a good argument to make that um, you know rather than having the regressive taxation where where the the, the it's very you know the, the, that that having this be borne by everybody as a town is. Uh, Fair is a less regressive. Well, that was a justification for yeah, the per bag. Well, we're, we're, we're yeah. not, you're talking about regressive, Phil. Here, you're talking about ten dollars. All right, we're not talking well, about I'm, a major. Yeah, percentage. you're talking about twenty and then thirty, and you're talking about seniors on fixed incomes that that have a that that you know that that that, that have to pay that and come there once every two months for with <clears> the bag or two. But but then this guy is coming in with full pickup trucks too. Administering in any other way stuff on there to be back an absolute to, nightmare. To it off. No, no, I'm not. I'm not suggesting the bad thing. I'm, I'm suggesting that rather than the entire cost borne by the sticker, that uh, some sort of mix of the sticker bearing some of it and general taxation well, bearing well, some well, of that's, it. Well, that's what that's what he's doing by raising his line item by twenty thousand. That's what he's doing. He's adding twenty thousand. That's town wide. That's everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. It but goes the, out of the taxes. Yeah. But so it's a sticker. It's an enterprise. Yeah. But the stickers but just the just the people that the stickers use. aren't the, the stickers aren't flat across because uh, like you, like Phil said, just two old ladies coming in there with a bag every two months, you know, and throwing it in there. But there's people pulling in there with dump trucks with mm -hmm. one tons and, and dumping it right in the hopper. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're paying the same amount as a little old lady. So. Right. Right. Maybe that's something that we can. Is it? Can we take a look at that? Can you charge more for the heavy oh, unit? I, I feel, feel. I'm still wondering. From that. That's paper Administration, Phil. Administration. 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 I'm still you got to figure the stuff. cost of doing this too. Yeah. 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 In fact, you've got a bunch of people with the entire board of health staff, all five of us, out there working for free, spending all day out there, not getting paid for it, and we're we're pushing stickers. You know how, how do you how do you how do you assign a cost to that? Okay. One uh, note on uh, public relations: uh, if you request it early enough, you can get a little third page, third of a page notices sent out with the tax bills, mm -hmm. and uh, I encourage you to. Yeah, take we, it, we 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 tried to get on that last year. And can, can, but can we do a presentation at town meeting about this whole situation as well? Sure. Okay, because it, it's important that people know about it and it's important <laughs> people to realize, you know, what's going on. Absolutely. Okay. Questions by the Finance Committee. Yeah, so what would be the impact of uh, how much revenue can we generate from so far from the sale of the $10 sticker 
Oh, I don't know what that came to. We sold 680 or 610 uh -huh. stick stickers at ten dollars a piece. Who's uh -huh. That is zero. That's how much came into the town. Thank you. Any other questions? That's enough. I think a presentation to the town is really important. Yeah, I, I think a town meeting because be educated it, always going on. this is this is a problem that uh, you know we weren't expecting. It's it's affecting the whole state. It's affecting every town in the state. Mm -hmm. Across the country, Not just us. In fact, the eastern part of the state's been going through it for years already. Big, big time. Yeah. yeah, big time. Um, okay. Thank you very much, Carl. Thanks, Thank Ernie. Thank thousand for the supplies right okay that looks great so basically the budget goes up by about five thousand yep. dollars which is uh, a little less than one percent right yep. okay. okay finance what do you got well, thanks uh, so in terms of the uh, winter budget you know 423 categories I have a question on the uh, Diesel expense, <coughs> are you concerned at all that we might be under budgeting based on you know, going back a couple of years? Um, I don't know what's the year to date, how are we doing year to date with the budget? And if Mike Coachella hasn't come out yet with his uh, December. Uh, yeah, um, actually I'm not 100% sure where we are with I don't think we're any worse and well we might be a little bit just because it has been a busy month. Yeah. Um, but on pretty much on that budget, I've been told to kind of leave it alone because that one can be overspent. Yeah. Um, so I haven't really, I know the supplies, I know for sure that, you know, we're going to spend more on the supplies. Supplies is gravel? No, that's um, cutting edges and anything related to um, snow removal. Um you know, for the trucks or okay. whatever, um, the sand and salt, or materials and mm -hmm. coal patch and stuff like that comes out of them budgets. But um, I, I, to be honest with you, the fuel, I, we really haven't been doing bad on the last, like last year and this year seems to be. Yeah, fuel prices have been relatively steady yeah. so far. Well, I, I don't understand it because that, the diesel last year was budgeted at fifteen thousand and expended was twenty five twenty five and a half thousand. That doesn't sound like doing good on fuel. That sounds like doing massively over on fuel. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so but, that's but so look at look at the other years. You see the other years? They're all about fifteen or less. Yeah. They're all right, but it's, but I mean in, 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 in light of last year this is um, is, 15, was, is 15 realistic for this year? Uh, yes, um, in my opinion, yes. I mean, it might be, might go over a little bit, but 
issue. Like I said, I've been asked to hold my winter budget as close as possible to. Yeah, because I, mean, I see salt. Salt is like salt has never come. So salt, you always budget at sixty, but in this five-year thing, you've never come. You've never come. You've never reached sixties. The most you've ever reached was fifty-six. 56 right. So can't that be set down to fifty-six if that's the most you've ever done? But, yeah, then I can swap things around. Mm -hmm. See, my budget is basically the bottom line. Mm -hmm. These are just sub accounts so that we can kind of see how things are going with the different aspects of the budget. Right. The bottom line is important, but the sub accounts are really important too, because that's how we track what things cost over time and, and all that. And that's how people people at home keep in score on the scorecard get to that's how the, it's the sub accounts that But you you're looking at it right now. I mean Right. Do you do you know how close you are for this year? For um, for expended fuel? I don't. Yeah. Mike Cachell hasn't come out yet with the December. Well, I have that. Oh, have I just that. haven't had time to sit down. And, I mean, it, it's been a crazy month yeah. and to actually sit down and uh, figure out, put all the stuff in my budget thing. I haven't had time. Tom, to does the state come out with any kind? of the state comes out with some kind of a recommended uh, guideline for fuel. I thought I remember from my my mental notes from the last couple of years that there's some type of a, a guidance that the, the state offers. Or something? I don't know anything about it. All right. For fuel, just in terms of any kind of recommended cost of yeah, fuel. Yeah, based on I, economic I forecast that, or something. No. All right. Well, well, hurry around. Well, we, oil certainly spiked over the last couple of days. So. Well, there's always the unknown about how things will work. Well, we're yeah. locked into a. Um, uh -huh. You have a fixed fee. price I mean, contract. I, we have a purchase. contract till. Mm -hmm. Well, my contract is for 15,000 gallons of uh -huh. fuel. Okay. Um, what, what, Ron, was there something you can remember that was extraordinary about uh, uh, 2019? As far as the fuel goes? Yeah. <coughs> um, was it something like... Uh, well, it was an extended year, you know, because normally we do December to April. Yeah. Pretty much everything is figured on fuel. I mean, we don't separate, there's no way that we can separate, so it's basically a time period. The last year went so long, it started early actually, it started in November, and it, you know, so that's probably where the difference came from, is once we start doing our winter stuff, we stay on the winter fuel for the, you know, out of the winter budget for the whole, until we're done with winter, and what was it, almost, May before we were done with yeah. um, winter fuel. Um, some because so you're saying it was just just a, a, a long year, right? For, it it's not like, like there was a bill that got carried no. from the year before. No, 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 <coughs> nothing like that. It's more just because there's no way that we can track it strictly for winter. Right. I mean, we do other things in the winter time, but. We really don't have any way of tracking it, you know, per gallon for, and that, I'm sure that that's why that was so high last year. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sorry I, I didn't pay any attention to it. I would have had more information on it. The, the, the category to me that really leaped out, leaped out was the repair category in your regular budget, just just for the fact that over the entire five years. Um, you've always spent way more than what was budgeted. Mm -hmm. That's and why I bumped it up last year. So it would still seem that like this number that is currently budgeted is not going to be adequate. But one of the things that I'm working on is because of the equipment, updating the equipment is helping with, once, once the trucks start, because <coughs> we got a new truck coming. I'm asking for another new truck this year. Mm -hmm. Um, Plenty for punishment, you. Well, hey, I've been saying right from the beginning that plan on trucks coming, it just wasn't going to happen right away because of the way the emissions and stuff were. Mm -hmm. The troubles that towns were having with trucks, that I was going to make what we had work until they 
and it's time now to start. I will make a note that my assistant is working on a Volkswagen grant, that, but I can't guarantee, so I can't stop. <coughs> I have to continue asking to replace them, but with any kind of luck, maybe next year we'll end up with three new trucks. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, there may be part things that we have to buy in addition, but um, just getting the trucks alone would be a huge help in the whole school. One new truck would be huge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Any other questions for Ron? Well, thank you. The overtime pay is level funded, you want to propose, but the last couple of uh, full fiscal years, it's been slightly higher. I don't know. I don't know. Well, all right. Um, I can I can figure that budget a lot better. Yeah. It's just that I've always been told I've done it in the past and I got shot down to keep it where it is All right. because the fact that we can overspend it. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I, I, I want to <coughs> just make it clear that um, you can go over budget in the Winter Roads account, but that is then taken off your next, it, it hits your next year's tax rate. Mm -hmm. So um, while it is possible to do it, um, I would say so long. And, and and you have been, I haven't um, gone over. You, you have been working within your budget, right? So if you hadn't been working within your budget, I would say definitely feel free to increase it, correct? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And because we we you know we, we don't want to be in the position of taking a yeah. hit next year for something that happened this year. That that's really yeah. for emergencies. Right. Yeah. yeah, I understand that. You know, I've done my best to keep within. I think I've done it. Yeah. I don't think I've gone over at all. Nope. Nope. Um, and the other thing that that's where the sub accounts to me being that the bottom line is the only number that ultimately matters as far as budget goes mm -hmm. the sub accounts fluctuate between each other mm -hmm. you know one you take one you know move it around a little bit yeah. and mm -hmm. when I first took over the finance committee that's what they told me Okay. Um, you know, was the only thing that they were really concerned about was the bottom line that I was staying within what I was asking for. So, I mean, if things want, need to be different or whatever, no, you know, it's, yeah, it's really to, it's supposed to guide you to be. Yeah, right. That's all. I understand. Yeah. That. They're supposed to reflect the reality, yeah. not yeah. just a portion of the reality. Well, just sort of like. Well, but look, it's tough to. The, the yeah, winters are so vary. Yeah. They vary so much that it's hard. Yeah. So we're only talking yeah. a few thousand of variants, so I mean, it's what's that? We're only talking a few thousand of variants. Like the biggest variance was fiscal year eighteen. You know, there was not even three thousand over what was budgeted. Yeah. And then, whatever. That's just a question. So, so you, you've done a lot of work on the town garage. Yes. And is that reflected in this budget, or you is that is that covered somewhere else? I thought of the money that got voted for the building. Uh, so, so it's not here. I mean, nope. okay, great. That, that's what I was. I was wondering how is it possible that you're doing all that work and and the labor cost in this and you're yeah, everybody yeah, and, and all, it, this hasn't it's grown up any. Yeah. That looks like a deal. Not a deal. Yeah. Now let's see snow flying up here. Other okay. questions okay. for Ron? That's it. Oh, so, I, I, just in general, you know, it's very good. Thank you. Yeah. Just about the Warren article. So oh, sure. we we paid we paid almost three thousand today for uh, Greg's auto body for repairs to twenty fourteen pickup. Mm -hmm. Was that what was that about? Couldn't figure it out. It was um, it was two. Well, it was some snowplow damage done last winter. It got repaired, and it was damage from. Um, accident down to the salt uh, storage building where a machine got backed into the pickup. Insurance paid a lot of it, but there's some things that I had done, like they, I had them paint the rocker panels and stuff with a polyurethane because getting in and out of it was taking the paint off. So I had them do a kind of a polyurethane. Undercoating thing to help 
prevent that from so it didn't allow us to it now. They had to replace a bumper that wasn't part of the insurance that had a thing in it, so I figured while they were doing it. Just trying to keep the truck in shape. And, you know, the other part, I know the way the bill came in, there was things on there that insurance covered, but there was no, part of that is deductible because it was two incidents, there was two deductibles that were not paid. Not too bad at all. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. you anything on my other building maintenance? Level funded. Yeah. Level funded. No way. Yeah. Level funded, yeah. Uh, it's not. I oh. told you, I gave you the update after. Uh oh. <laughs> So, uh, so I, I think there's more to come. So tell us, tell us about the building maintenance. Okay, sorry about that. No, well, I increased. Okay, what would you increase? The electricity to eighteen thousand. Okay. Um, mainly because I know the salt. I mean, the new building is going to start using some electricity. Yeah. So I bumped it up to. Um, I, Conservatively figured fifteen hundred dollars more to it. Okay. And then um, grounds maintenance, I added two thousand dollars to okay. to make that twelve thousand. So the total is seventy-seven four thirty-three. Okay. Would you so up the grounds maintenance? Too? So it's up by thirty-five hundred. Would you? Uh, twelve thousand. Twelve. All right, everything else is level funded. Yes. Okay. So, grounds maintenance is triple what it was five years ago at that request. We got, we got more grounds? We got three times as many grounds? No, we don't. We pay now. There is no trust fund paying for the ball field maintenance. Uh, We're doing mowing. We've always no. done mowing. It's just that the trust fund used to pay for the ball field mowing. Well, the contracting for the mowing. Uh, Contracting for the mowing. Well, the trust fund paid for the yeah. portion of the ball field being paid. You know. And so what happened to the trust fund? They ran out of money. At least that's what I'm being told. <laughs> Which fund was that? Something mm -hmm. well, We got down to the principal and uh -huh. the finance yeah. committee. Yeah. yeah. What was the main point? Help us out. Okay. Uh, question for you. So. Um, this 2021 budget, does that, that covers, because you're vacating the old building, correct? Sometime. Sometime. In other words, so once you leave that building, some, some, another department is going to be picking up the slack in mm -hmm. here. So what are we... As far as the electricity, you mean? Yeah, electric, yeah. heat... Uh, well, the heat won't change. Mm -hmm. The heat won't change in the building. What we're paying right now won't change. But that's going to be over the new building. But he's saying a different budget would be paying for it. No. No, no. Because the new building will be in here. Um, I'm pretty sure the cost that I have for propane now is close. I mean, I... I don't know where we're going to be. I don't know. So, so you're any. saying we could take this budget that is covering the maintenance and, you know, of that building, move it to the new building, and then we have to be concerned with who's going to pick up? No, 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 no. I'm saying that I think that what's in the budget I can handle. I might be a little bit off because right now um, propane, let's see. Maybe. Yeah, hang on, so eleven thousand. Oh, doesn't give what the expenditure was. I've actually last year I lowered it, the propane cost because we were way uh, way over budgeting. So I've just moved some. It didn't change my budget, but I did change it in the sub accounts. <coughs> I'm, but, but I, I'm pretty sure that we're... But the long and short of it is, right now there's one building. Mm -hmm. At some point in the next year, a year right, and a half, next year. there's two buildings. Correct. 
And <coughs> is the highway still going to be paying part of that, the old building? It's, this is building maintenance, not highway. So. Oh, okay. Well, so building maintenance is going to have to cover right. two buildings. All the buildings, yes. Or all the buildings. Correct. Okay, I get it. So I'm pretty we might confident. I'm pretty confident that we'll be after next year. I'll know where we are. Right. I mean, you um, have a new building. You shouldn't have any maintenance right. or repair. You'll have fuel and electric. Right. Basically, yeah. fire station needs it. Well, the soon-to-be fire station needs a paint job. Yes. <laughs> Very much so. Um, I'm confident that what's in my budget won't be an issue as far as make, making the other for, the for new 2021. building. In 2022, we may see right. an increase. You may see an increase because then I'm going to have a real good idea of where we are. So did this building may also include for, for all the buildings? No. So is, is there anything for a replacement storm door for the town hall? Yes. There is? It's one of the minor embarrassments that I get every time I walk into that building. It was supposed to be done. It just okay. went too quick. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Any other questions for Ron? Thank you, Ron. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Other fiscal 2021 budget business. Tom, do you have anything on that? Um, I don't. Okay. Next item, uh, we already took care of. Uh, you have an update for us, Tom? Yes. Hey, thanks, Ron. Tonight was a good warm up. Yeah, certainly you know, not. Nothing too, nothing too complicated. Pretty warm up. Nice <laughs> to have it level funded, pretty much. Um, for committee news, as you know, the Agriculture Commission has not chosen the chair. I'm planning to send an email to the currently appointed members noting that, one, the budget is due, and then I'm proposing one dollar to keep the account active. Two, the select board acted as the Agricultural Commission and the Burke complaint. And three, without a chair, they will be able to conduct business. Uh, and finally, four, I can convene a meeting to organize the commission if a majority of people reply that they'd like to keep going. Uh, in other committee news, I've been working with Malcolm Course to develop an invitation for bids for the town hall cupola based on the town meeting vote in December. It should be ready to be posted in a week or two. Thank you, Tom. Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. you coming in. Go ahead, Tom. In uh, departmental news, I've been asked by the FERCOD to share Connolly's experience in the town academy at a meeting on citizen engagement and education. I'll be pleased, pleased to bring the idea and some observations to regional towns. That's great. Uh, the MMA would like to have a legislative breakfast in Conway on March 6th. Um, we can easily fit 50 people, they're required to have a general purpose room and have it accessible. Um, and I have checked with the town nurse who can hold the wellness clinic in the adjoining office because I've also checked with Lee. Uh, she does not require much space for that. Um, so I did get an answer uh, actually just, just before the um, uh, The highway superintendent asked me to look into some neighboring towns' policies of fines for plowing snow into the roads. The problem which has gotten much worse. I hope you have something on your next agenda about that. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. The town's Chapter 90 account will receive an extra $26,476 due to the passage of the supplemental budget filed by the governor, which is a 10% increase. That's great. Uh, I regret to say I found out today that our application for a grant from the Massachusetts Office on Disability was not awarded at this time, though if funding becomes available, that is, if other towns are not able to use their awards, it will still be funded. I have a call scheduled for Wednesday with the office to see how the proposal might be improved. There's been some email talk among the towns aggregating their electricity supply with Colonial Power of writing the Secretary of Energy and Environment to see what the holdup is with issuing the order allowing the aggregation to proceed. 
and copying our legislators. I'm not sure how much good that would do, but if the board likes, I'd be happy to draft such a letter. I might comment on that. Mm. The, um, the DPU has, has gotten um, bogged down in details on a number of issues with aggregation, and it is causing a delay, not only in, in the aggregations for um, the group of towns we're in, but all towns. Statewide. Yes, I, statewide. I, I, I was unsure that that would be... Um, uh, but by, by all means, um, you know, let's, let's get the towns together and write a letter to uh, the, uh, the sec our new secretary, because it's, you know, this is something that, that shouldn't take more than 60 to 90 days, and it's... So Col Colonial has been talking to us about doing this, yeah. so I'm not yeah. sure if it would make sense for Conway to draft a letter, but... The, the, um, the, the, the idea now is for each town to do what yeah, they can. Yeah, and it has to come from the town. Great. It can't yeah. come from the consultant. It's got to come from the town. I was more interested, also interested in just a fuller explanation of what the state's been up to all this time. What were those interrogatories sent out to for all the towns for? What was all this well, stuff okay, going the inter on? The interrogatories we got were nothing compared to the interrogatories coming out now. Hmm. Okay. So, so um, I'd like to know, but like, what, what is that all about? Like, what is it all about? Yeah, it's Gen generally. Well, I, I there's, can't there's use the words to describe it here in a public meeting, Philip. So I won't. But it's um, just you know, it's it's mostly nonsense. But they don't send. They don't get involved in it unless there's some type of suspicion of something incorrect or wrong on behalf of something or someone. It's like those aren't just things they do randomly. Phil. You want to read some of the docket, some of the questions? You can, you can go to the, the DPU file room and look at some of the aggregation dockets and some of the uh, questions they're asking. And you'll, you'll see what's going on. Okay. Uh, uh, finally, if anyone knows <coughs> any economic de development projects, which are probably unlikely for Conway, say an industrial park, well. um, or potential brownfields assessment projects, which can be both public or private property, please let me know for submission to the FERCOG. Uh, examples include old mill buildings, farm properties, and illegal dump sites, typically residential properties without a history of commercial or industrial use are not eligible. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you, you'll recall that's uh, how the pulling up the old tanks from the old garage across from the town office. That's how that was funded. So there's another round of that coming around. If anyone has any ideas for assessing various properties, please let me know. Mm -hmm. okay. So a couple, a couple things. The, the Copio thing, um, that's great. Is uh, That can be done <coughs> locally, right? I mean, it's, it's under the $50,000 amount, the contract amount, so we, it doesn't have to be going through the uh, formal bidding process. It can just be notices in the, uh, you know, notices on a bulletin board. It can be any method of, of, of reaching bidders that you choose. It's not required. Um, no, that's, thir that's 30B. It's got to be 30B. Tom, procurement? Uh, if it's under 50000 you don't have to bid it out properly. There, like are, there are different levels of bidding, and mm -hmm. they're different for the different projects. Um, this is just an assessment, so it is a service, so it would be 30B. This isn't actually doing anything about it. This is just assessing the property at this point. And so I, mean, I guess my point is that, um, it, that I'd like to, to just, if there's any chance to support local contractors and local businesses, and it's all just the same well, anyway, then we, that's what we want to do, right? If we go out to bid and local bidders bid, then certainly they can yeah. be considered. Yeah, sure. not, none of them follow that stuff. Is, yeah, well, it's, it's, the program is through the FERCOD. So they're managing this Brownfields program, the grant. No, 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 I'm talking about the, 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 the Copula, the, top, the, the Mountain Course, Copula, Town Hall. Oh. <coughs> not Brownfield. Yeah, they're, that, that, that's building construction, and that um, we, we have a certain amount of uh, advertising we're required to do for that. And we 
take the lowest bid, all that sort of thing. It's chapter you know, 149. We will, we will certainly, you know, um, favor local tradesmen. I'm looking at this. And then the MMA legislative breakfast, the similar concerns, um, just having suffered through the dining options that were at the, at the last fur card dinner where they just went to the Chinese restaurant across the street, the same thing, you know, can, can we use these things to support Conway businesses and or businessmen? And, the and last time we do. The last time the MMA who runs this uh, did it, they used a local vendor. Mm -hmm. They do. They, they do wherever they go. Any other concerns? I did not know that, John. Yes. Any other concerns? Uh, no, I think No. That's... Okay, good. No concerns. Okay, ma'am. <laughs> ma okay. We got a holiday card from um, Senator Hines. Oh, yeah. Has everybody seen the card? Yeah. Seen the card? I have now. Okay. Good. No, no, that's okay. You got one. A section? No. Oh, sure. Oh, maybe did. I did. I don't know. You got one at Always artwork from uh, school children somewhere yes. in the district. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got a letter from the Department of Environmental Protection. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, it's about uh, Western Massachusetts Regional Recycling Program, which we talked about earlier. This is this is the one noting that uh, the contract has to be signed by the end of this month. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we already discussed that. <clears throat> Uh, we got a very generous contribution from one of our uh, residents, Ed LaRue, uh, of $200, and he asked it to be <coughs> uh, distributed among four funds in town, the Flag Fund, the Ambulance Fund, the Police Department Fund, and the Fire Department Fund. Mm. Has everybody seen this? No, but that's great. I hope, <coughs> I hope we do fancy letterheads. We ought to have special embossed letterheads for like situations like that, like really classy <coughs> Okay, do we have any announcements? Uh, no announcements. No okay. announcements. Announced enough. Okay, our next meeting uh, is scheduled for next week. Next week, the 13th, that's Monday the 13th, here in the town hall at 6 p.m. Uh, if there's no other business. Can we just talk about scheduling in the future? Um, the 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 week after that is Martin Luther King Day, so I assume we're on Tuesday the 21st instead of Monday the 20th, or are we still doing Monday the 20th? <coughs> uh, it should be on uh, your budget schedule as uh, Tuesday. And then the, the Monday after that was the, we were requested to attend uh, a, a, yes. a special meeting right. with the legislators. So we're, we're, yeah, so we can we can do like a 4.30 select board meeting, you think? Is that possible? The 27th? It's That would be okay with me. <coughs> Tom, would you make a note of that? Sure. If we have an early meeting, we have... That's a 6 o'clock meeting in Sunderland? Yes. Okay, so if we I, can... I'm not sure the uh, finance committee will be able to make that, but I will... Uh, I'll check. If we need to make it another day that week, please don't have it be Tuesday because uh, marathon negotiating session with the union starts at 4 o'clock. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, that, so, that, that will not be a, I don't think that's a warrant um, meeting, so we could go later into the week if we had to. I'd be okay with Wednesday or Thursday or Friday. Of that week. But not Tuesday. Okay, any other business to come before the board? If not, uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. So we we'll have a second. All in favor? Aye. Billy, you in favor?